So we're going to talk about torque. That's why I put this one here down from Family Guy. You know what grinds my gears? When the tensile strength of toilet paper is lower than the torque required to unroll it, i.e. when it pulls off, a piece of paper pulls off too fast. Okay, so let's talk about torque itself. What do we mean by this? Torque is a little bit tough because it's 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 not an exact one-to-one um, version of something linear. So I'm going to say it's the rotational equivalent of force, but only kind of. Okay, it's not exactly. So, all right, well, what is it? Well, it's not exactly a force. It's a rotational kind of equivalent. So watch, if I've got some kind of pivot point, so this point right here, and I've got some kind of stick going out, well, then depending on what I do with this thing, so if I apply, for example, a force this way, or if the force is straight down or something, then there's going to be some kind of you know, lever action here that's going to uh, be formed. So it's not exactly a force, uh, but we'll see it's close to that. And it depends on the R here. And we're going to use a symbol, a Greek symbol called tau for torque. Okay, so it's going to be called tau here. And the equation is going to go like this. This is on your data booklet. So torque equals F times R times sine of angle theta. So this, you don't have to memorize. It's in your data booklet. Okay, so let's try to figure out what are the different uh, units here. Well, torque, we'll leave that one for a second here. F is going to be the applied force. So in this case, this would be a force either going down at an angle or something. Um, R is the distance from the axis of rotation. So it, it depends on how far away this whole thing is, how long it is. Then theta is the angle between the applied force and R. And that, uh, that theta is measured in degrees. It is not the same as angular displacement. Remember that one? That's measured in uh, radians. So just be aware of that. So basically it depends on where your angle is. And a nice exam tip here is this. Very often, uh, the center of mass is going to help for tau and alpha. So in other words, so if you're considering some sort of stick like this, well, where is all the mass? The mass isn't all at the end. It's you know everywhere. But what we do then, a nice trick is we just consider where is the center of the mass and just deal with that as a point that's moving around. And of course, if the angle is the uh, theta is 90 degrees, in other words, if the force, the applied force is straight down, for example, here, compared to this horizontal here on this, on this uh, R here, um, well then, because theta is the angle between uh, the applied force and R, if theta equals 90 degrees, well, what's the sine of 90? Sine of 90 is just 1. So what does that mean? That means the equation for tau just becomes tau equals fr times 1, which is just tau equals fr. And this is the very, very common end result. It's quite rare, actually, on exams that you're going to have to deal with the sine theta, but just in case you need it, uh, you have the angle. But this is the more useful one. You're going to end up probably using tau equals f times r a lot more. So let's go back and look at Newton's first law. If you remember it from linear terms, it says that an object in motion stays in motion unless otherwise, uh, unless it's acted upon by like an external unbalanced or net force. Well, there's a rotational version as well. And it says that, hey, it's going to keep rotating at a constant speed as long as there's no resultant or net torque. So that's what I'm just trying to put down here. So if there's no result in net torque, it means there's no acceleration. It just keeps spinning at a constant speed. Just like in linear terms, you know, if there's no net force, then there's no acceleration. It goes at a constant speed. And keep in mind, so we have something that we call rotational equilibrium. That's just if there's no net torque. All right, let's do Newton's second law revisited. So do you remember the equation F equals MA? That's one of the formulations of Newton's second law, that the net force equals mass times acceleration. Well, we have a version here. Now, remember I said that force is kind of like torque, so that would be T. Instead of M, do you remember what we put for M? We put in moment of inertia. And instead of A, we say alpha. So this is also an equation from your data book. So let's remind ourselves, what are all the letters here? We've got tau is torque, I is moment of inertia, and alpha is angular acceleration. This one, for example, is radians per uh, second squared. So that's an important one there. Okay. Uh, what about moment of inertia? Well, if you remember, it's uh, mr squared, or some sigma of that. So it's going to be uh, kilograms times meters squared. And torque. Now, of course, you could do it in these units here, but remember, torque was the same thing as F times R. So it's Newton's uh, times meters. It's in Newton meters here.
And here's a nice little tip here for exams is that a net torque means that it accelerates. I'm just repeating this. It's really important. Okay, so if it's a net torque, it's gonna have an angular acceleration. I put this one here because when you're forever alone and your physics book trolls, you look, calculate the total torque acting on this. <laughs> oh God, this complicated looking heart. Let's figure out the torque direction. Remember I said torque isn't exactly like force? Here's where it's not exactly like force. So let's consider something that's rotating, in this case, in this direction like this. We've got R and we've got an applied force this way. What we do is we use our right hand rule. In my case, it's my right hand here. And what do you do? Put your fingers, so start your fingertips in the direction of R, and then curl them in the direction of F. In my case, up and then curl them to the left. And then my thumb is going to be pointing in the direction of the torque. So in this case, I right hear tau, that's the torque. And this one here technically then is going to be the direction of rotation, you can say. I mean, that's what's going to happen here. Um, so we're going from R to F. So in this case right here, if I was going to draw it this way, torque goes that way. It's a bit weird. I can't imagine they're asking you very much about this other than just, yeah, if, if something is rotating, which way is the torque? Well, I guess it just gives you right hand rule and torque is your thumb. There we go. So you're much more likely going to be needing to calculate the value of the torque. That's going to be really important. Or you're going to be asked, you know, to find the angular acceleration, which came from the torque. So you'll see that the torque is going to be useful for calculating. Um, so let's actually do an example where we have to calculate something. So let's look at a pretty tricky question, but if we can solve this, we can solve anything. So we have a uniform metal rod, that means it's the same everywhere along the rod, and it's set about some sort of pivot here. And it's resting horizontally on a support that's frictional. So here's a support. So if you see, it's kind of like my little pencil right here. It's kind of sitting right here on the, on the support. Of course, if I let the support go, it's going to you know, fall down. So you know that's what we're going to be looking at in part B. But in part A, we're just going to look at, OK, this right here is what's going on right now. So it's, it wants to spin or wants to rotate, but this support is stopping it. So the question will be, what force does a support exert on the rod? So let's take a look at this and see if we can figure out what's going on. For starters, uh, let's look at this right here and see about these applied forces. Because remember, we are often needing to know about um, R, for example. The radius goes this way. And the force, because it's due to gravity, is this way. And because of that, we have that the angle then between them is 90 degrees. That's going to be important. Because what does that mean? Do you remember the equation for torque? Torque goes. Um, F times R times sine of theta. But if theta is 90 degrees, sine of 90 is 1. So that means what? That means then that the torque is just going to be equal to F times R. That's going to be an important first piece here we're going to be using. So in other words, we can just multiply the force times R, this distance out. Okay, well, the very fact that it's holding still tells us it must be in equilibrium. Okay, so if it's in equilibrium, there must be no net torque. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, that means that, you know, this, this sort of torque caused by this sort of direction must be equal to the torque this way. In other words, the one caused by gravity, you know, that it wants to do is the same thing as it's like a normal force of this one here acting upwards. They have to be equaling each other out or else this thing would be accelerating in some way. So there must be no net torque. Okay. Well, that means then I can say something like, you know, F1 times R1 is going to be equal to F2 R2. In other words, you know, this, if I deal with F1 as just like the whole rod right here, this complete length of the rod, and F2 R2 is going to be this one right here. Okay, so this is here, I'll call this R2, I'll call this one here R1. Okay, well, if that's the case, then it should be straightforward, but it's not quite, because we have to use something really important here. This rod, where is its mass? The mass isn't at the end. It's an actual physical rod. So in other words, we have to use, so for the rod, we have to use the center of mass. That's going to be really important here. So we're going to use the center of mass of the rod. So in other words, it's not sitting at 6. It's actually technically sitting at 3. That's going to be the center of mass. So let's deal with F1, R1. So F1, let's see, it's going to be um, the weight of the rod because, you know, F equals mg. So we can say then this is going to be um, the weight of the rod, so 40 newtons times R1, in other words, times is 6 meters, all that over 2. 
and that's because of the center of mass here. So that's why. So that I don't think was obvious. Maybe I'll make that one actually in. Um, I'll make it in yellow here. So you can say so the center of mass. That's why we divide it by two. Okay, that's going to be the same thing as. And by the way, this was F one, and that right there was R one. And then F two. What's F two? That's actually what we're trying to find, isn't it? That's the force. We're looking at that. So F2 times R2, what's that distance? That's the distance out to the rod. So that must be 5 meters. Okay, so F2 times 5. And this is all, of course, divided by 2. Well, then if I want to do this, then I just put it all together and get the answer. So let's see. So I've got F2 then equals, um, it's going to be this uh, 40 times 6. Well, 4 times 6 is uh, 24. So I add a 0, so it's going to be 240. Uh, divide that by 2, um, and actually divide that by 10. That's because I'm dividing by the 5 here. Oh, well, that makes it uh, 240 divided by 10, so that's just going to be 24. So the force uh, uh, that the support exerts on the rod then will be 24 newtons. Okay, so now we have a situation where the support is removed, and now the rod begins to rotate about the pivot. So in other words, now it's going to start, you know, actually rotating like this. Whee! And the moment of inertia of the rod about the pivot point is 30.1 kilogram meters squared. So that's, what's that letter? Moment of inertia, that is I. Okay. So now what? Well, we want to know the initial angular acceleration. So in other words, we want to find alpha. How can we deal with this? Well, we've dealt already with a torque before. Remember from uh, before at least. So let's just find out what is the torque actually um, of this rod right here. So what is the torque of the rod? Um, or torque experienced by the rod. So this one here, if we do this one here, remember again, uh, we're going to use this equation tau equals F times R. And remember this whole length right here was 6 meters. So again, we're going to say it's the same sort of thing we did before. It's going to be the force, which was 40 newtons times 6 meters. That was F1, that was R1. But remember, we divided by 2. And remember why we divided by 2? Because of the center of mass. Okay, that wasn't obvious, so that's why I want to point it out here. So if we do that one right there, um, well, we're left with, let's see here. We've got 40 times 6, which is 240, divided by 2. So basically we get um, this value then, that the torque is going to equal 120. Now keep in mind, uh, these are Newton meters. So this is important, okay, but now what? So now that we found the torque, now what? Well, remember, if we want the angular acceleration, we have an equation for that, don't we? We have from Newton's second law. Instead of F equals MA, we have torque equals I alpha. So because of that, then we can just solve for alpha, can't we? We can just say, hey, alpha is just going to be the torque divided by the moment of inertia. Okay, well, I know both of those, don't I? Look, I know everything here I need. So the torque is going to be 120. And the moment of inertia is going to be 30.1. Let's go ahead and calculate that. So I use my trusted calculator. I do a nice pretty fraction. And I say, hey, what's 120 divided by 30.1? And I end up with an answer of 3.9867. Well, that means my answer for uh, alpha then, if I wanted to two significant figures, um, which I think I was allowed from before, then I would say this here is uh, 4.0. And this would be radians per second squared. Um, if you want to do it to three significant figures, of course, then you could say it is, um, I'm just going to move this here, or you could say it's, uh, you know, 3.99, for example. Either way, we have the initial angular acceleration.